installation project. Come to American Tree and discover a whole new gardening experience. American Tree Home and Garden Showplace located on Van Dyke just north of Dryden Road. Have a great right week now, in your sorry garden. Sorry about that. We didn't need, need to go to it a From little bit early. Again, if you want to find us on Facebook and Twitter and you want to talk about what the Fab Five is talking about, you'd like to interact on Twitter with us, find us at MyVote on Facebook and at MyVote on Twitter and hashtag it MyVoteMath. And we can talk about it together. Also, my handle is at Christy TV. If you uh, if you want to get in on the conversation you on Twitter, Pluto. Uh, I, I am, but I don't tweet very often. I was I was going to say I feel like I'm my mom and dad. Are you on the Twitter? <laughs> okay, so uh, you could also find uh, you can also find Rick Pluto as we wait for them to start. And again, apologize for the uh, for the slight delay. Um, do you think we are going to hear more uh, about a plan about regional transportation? Uh, you know what? Uh, uh, every year. Every I, year they talk about regional that, transportation. That, that you can't you know that that you can't do the whole you know, revitalization of Detroit without some discussion of transportation, without some discussion of, of mass transportation, and trying to figure out a, a, a way to make that work. All right, I'm hearing in my ear that they are ready to go. We'll take you into the session. What's going to happen at this session? And it gets underway on WJR in just a moment. Does your business banker actually know what business you're in? Really understand what it is you do? how you make money, where your industry is heading. The next time he calls to let you know about the benefits. And sometimes all you can say is, hey, it's live television, right? Um, everyone is putting their headphones on, and what they have to do is they have to coordinate with the radio broadcast right now. So that's what we're waiting. We keep getting a couple of false cues, but we'll, we'll bring you in um, just momentarily. And again, we want to thank you for joining us. If you're watching us online at myvote.org or any of the streaming coverage that is embedded in a lot of the media uh, websites throughout the state and also on PBS stations across the state of Michigan. So um, we're going to take you to the Fab Five. And I promise I won't tease you the next time. Okay, Rick, so if regional transportation is something that and they'll we should talk point out, about. Transportation Secretary Ray LaHood we'll is going to be. here on Monday. And uh, so that's expected to be an announcement, maybe uh, some money for uh, a uh, transit line in Detroit. Talking about the M1 light rail project, which mm -hmm. a lot of business leaders and a lot of um, foundations have put up the money to make sure that that becomes a reality. Do you think it would be anything also about a second span of a bridge? Uh, the topic will come up, although that's largely in the purview of Governor Rick Snyder, that he never comes to this event without making at least one plea for a bridge. And we heard earlier that, that he did kind of throw down on the Maroon family saying that there's one special interest that's misleading people you know, on, on that bridge. And that's become just you know, a staple of, of these appearances. Will it you know, come up with the, with the Fab Five? I, I, I think it's likely just because it's such an intrinsic part of like mass transit. It's one of those central elements of uh, fixing the economy of the region. A lot of attention and focus obviously is on Detroit. Wayne County, Oakland County gets a lot of attention, but here you have County Executive Mark Hackle from Macomb, mm -hmm. who uh, is a new county executive in the newly created position, and this is his second year as part of this, this round table. He's really trying to come out swinging and say, hey, take a look at Macomb. We've got a lot of things going on here, and he even launched his own Make Macomb Your Home. Yeah, if, you were, if you were driving up uh, 75 to go to this it. conference, you would see a giant billboard with Mark Hackle's picture on it, touting Macomb as the, uh, as the place to be, which is sort of an interesting thing, you know, in, in sort of the resort paradise of northern Michigan. Yeah, I was surprised when I saw the billboards for, like, the mystery spot and things like that, and all of a sudden there was Mark Hackle's face. Um, interesting that, that marketing is always always key. It's always how you market yourself and how you can get your message out there, and you've got to make sure that it gets through everybody else's. Well, we clutter. talk about the politics, but this is a business conference, and, you know, these, these people surrounding us, I mean, they're, they're marketers, you know, and, and a lot of them are up here with something to sell. You know, Mark Hackle's no different. And we should also uh, point out that Washtenaw County is here, and one of the interesting things about that, that, you know, Ann Arbor is considered an urban center in Michigan that works, and so people are always juxtaposed that experience against you know what to do about Detroit about Flint about Saginaw you know those other urban centers that are that are mm -hmm. struggling and there is regional cooperation we talked to uh, Conan Smith a little bit earlier just before the Fab Five conference and he said there is regional cooperation but yes I mean everyone would love to have businesses relocate into their area and the way Conan put it that said that you know if we grow them in, in Ann Arbor and if someone graduates and they have their own startup business and maybe then they can grow it into Detroit and that's and that's good for everyone. All right, are we set to go now to the Fab Five? So apparently, 
apparently we're not. Um, maybe fourth time will be the charm this time, <laughs> do you think, Rick? <laughs> well, you know, uh, as we well know, that sometimes it just takes a little while to uh, get uh, everything together, you know. And there are, there are not just five, but six strong personalities up there. Maybe they're just trying to make room for them. I'm just waiting for the, uh, I'm just waiting for the go ahead in my ear. All right, we are now going to the Fab Five. You won't see Session. me for a while. Warm welcome to Detroit Mayor Dave Bing. <laughs> Oakland County Executive L. Brooks Patterson. <laughs> Macomb County Executive Mark Hackle. <laughs> Wayne County Executive Robert Ficano. <laughs> and Chairman of the Washtenaw County Board of Commissioners, Conan Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, uh, just assume that your mic is on at all times and you're all welcome to chime in at any time. We want to hear from you. A couple of quick notes uh, from your moderator. First of all, anybody else see that billboard on the way up here? <laughs> that billboard of Mark Hackle? The Macomb County Commissioner Mark Hackle? It says, uh, uh, make Macomb County your home? That was really something. It's a marketing opportunity. It's the first time I had an opportunity to steal some limelight from Brooks Patterson up here on the island. Really? Well, I'm Listen, thinking wait, that Brooks wait. Patterson might have uh, some ideas of his own. Well, I just want to point out that I saw a similar sign with Mark's face three times larger than Lake St. Clair at a, um, uh, at a trailer park in Mount Clements, and it says, it says uh, drive your home to Macomb. <laughs> And that thing in the backdrop, just in case, if you look, if you're able to see behind my head, you'll see it's called a lake. Something they have very few of. In oh, Canada. I'm so... I whoa, wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was hoping he's walk into that one, well, but listen, I didn't know it would be that early in the program. Well, listen, you know, I got to say... <laughs> no, 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 no. I really, I, I really, you know what, it's funny, uh, because when I got dressed today, he wanted to wear a cute little sweater vest that matched my tie. If you Lake St. Clair <laughs> in Macomb County, according to the DEQ, has 23 miles of shoreline. The same DEQ, Oakland County, has 1,043 miles of shoreline. Now wait, that many lakes in Oakland County, 1,600. Uh, just two lakes, Cass and Orchard, 28 miles bigger than, than St. Clair. So I, I like that 23-mile shoreline you those got, are, but those are, don't give it to me. Those huh? are pretty good-sized ponds. I like them. Oh, yeah. I like them. Nice little those bubble. ponds have hundred, you know, a million-dollar home. And we home, haven't even dollar. begun yet. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. That's all the time we've got. <laughs> We're going to have to put a dog in the act pretty soon here. Robert, nice to see you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything new? <laughs> oh, I know, I gotta ask Brooks. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait a second. Uh, that reminds me, I was wondering, uh, 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 Brooks, if you found yourself in uh, Bob Ficano's shoes, what would you... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, wait. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Say... No, 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 no. Shh, shh, shh. He answered that already, so I think it's only fair to ask Bob Ficano, Bob, if you found yourself in Brooks Patterson's shoes, what would you do? Probably double the pay of my press secretary for the last 24 hours <laughs> and all the calls that he got. No, I've changed my mind. I, I, I would say, if I, Bob's advice, I say, hang in there, Bob, and tell those bastards to leave you alone. <laughs> that might be even better. That's better. All right, now we're underway. Uh, let's talk a little bit about collaboration. You can see that these guys all get along very well. <laughs> Regional transit. Regional transit. Fab Five in agreement for the, uh, the need for improved regional transit and how we achieve it. What do you say? I know, uh, Mr. Mayor, where you stand. Uh, absolutely. I'm in, I'm in favor of it, uh, have been from the beginning. Um, and, and I do think that there is a, a meeting coming up uh, on Monday uh, that will speak specifically about the, uh, the M1 rail line in Detroit. Robert? Yes, uh, I'm in agreement with it, but I think what we have to do is look long range as well. Uh, pretty soon you're going to have three different layers of uh, really transit authorities that are going to be uh, uh, giving direction. Uh, not only the one now that the governor has proposed, but also obviously SMART and, and DDOT. If we're really serious about it, uh, we eventually have to combine this. And maybe, I know the legislature has been active in a lot of areas, perhaps what they do at this point is say, you know what, we're going to give you five years, some way, resolve your legacy costs, uh, come to some type of conclusion on what you're going to do, or we're going to sunset it, and we'll combine all of them together so that we have one regional authority that's going to run this instead of have three different ones 
that are really sprouting about. A regional sure transit. That's the best idea, though, for the, the entirety of the region. You look at a place like Washtenaw, where we've got a different kind of funding stream and a, a different set of challenges, but we need to stay connected to the balance of the region. So we've got a great transit system there. Let's make sure that we're, we're coordinated, interactive with what's going on in the balance of the metro area, but let's not compromise the professionals that have done a great job building it. That's Conan Smith, chairman of the Washtenaw County Board of Commissioners. Maybe the, uh, the least familiar voice, but he'll become more familiar as we go along. Uh, it's up to you now, uh, Mark or Brooks, your thoughts on uh, either the Regional Transit Authority or the whole idea of the Regional Transit. I think it's important. It makes us uh, competitive with other regions throughout the country for uh, some of these world resources. It's something that has sorely been missing, talked about for many, many years. Uh, but until we put an authority in place, and we need a legislator to get uh, to get moving on that, the question is to the governance model and how it's going to be paid for. I think we need to get the authority together to start hammering that issue out to make that determination. COBO is a great example. I think we talk about that often enough. The governance model that's there, it's working great. And those of you that have had an opportunity to see what's uh, going on down in the city of Detroit with that riverfront and how Cobo is going to add value to that based upon that authority. Absolutely incredible. We need a regional authority. We need to start moving forward instead of talking about this with a regional transit authority in the metropolitan area. Thank you, Mark. Brooks? Well, I think we all agree uh, we need an improved regional transit system. But my line has been for the last 15 years, we've had these big four, but now big five sessions. You all know my answer. It's how much is it going to cost and who's going to pay for it? And that's always the devil that's in the detail. And that still has not been mapped out yet. They're talking about $40 registration plate on your car, one kind of fee. Uh, it goes, they, have, they have a range of options. All of them are not you know, very palatable. I think the public's going to have to make those decisions, however. All right. Uh, speaking of working together, uh, regional infrastructure. Millage requests appear to be the only solution to continued funding for regional institutions. However, this places the counties in a position of either supporting or not supporting based on needs of their county taxpayers. Is it possible to develop a single mechanism to fund regional asset institutions? Take the DIA, the zoo, for example. Well, look, I think the audience probably remembers that that proposal was actually on the ballot about, I don't know, 8, 10, 12 years ago. It was called the Regional uh, Cultural Tax and it incorporated a lot of the uh, cultural assets and it was voted down by the public. Uh, it was too broad a sweep. So uh, is there an effort or could there be an effort to fund it on a regional basis? Well, it's been tried once and shot down. We'll have to approach it from a different angle, I think. Macomb County's always been extremely supportive of regional assets and regional issues. I, you look at the smart system. There's not an opt-out municipality in Macomb County. They've always supported it. They've always voted for it because they knew exactly where that money was going to be spent, where it was going to go to the Detroit Zoo. They've supported it. They've been there for it. Cobo Authority, the people have been there. They've supported it. And I have a belief that uh, this uh, uh, Detroit Institute of Art is going to, uh, to go over very well in Macomb County as well. So we support regional initiatives based upon what it is you're talking about. If the people trust that that money is going to be spent appropriately on that particular initiative, uh, Macomb County voters have always stepped up to the plate on those regional assets. It was announced uh, earlier today on our show that the DSO, the Detroit Symphony Orchestra, had fabulous news to report, and that is the albatross hanging over their heads for so long has been the expense of the Max M. Fisher Hall. And that was worked out with their bankers and with private funding, and they have that now debt-free, oh, which is astounding and a very big deal and a very important step in the right direction uh, for the cultural institutions, in this case, in the city of Detroit, Mr. Mayor. Well, we have a lot of those cultural institutions in the city of Detroit, and I think uh, uh, I'm very fortunate at this point in time to have the relationship with the leadership uh, from the different counties. Um, you know. I understand it took us 24 times to really try to get this transportation authority together. And uh, uh, I believe we, it's important. We still need to make sure we do that because without regional cooperation and collaboration, uh, we are not going to be competitive with other, uh, with other areas, not only in Michigan, but in other states. Gentlemen, anyone else? Sure. I mean, when you look at the DIA, the zoo, and other type of uh, cultural activities, it's not only a part of what we uh, do for ourselves, but also it's a selling point. When companies come in and they locate, of course they're going to look at uh, taxes and, and things like that, but they also want to know, if I have a number of employees here, am I going to have a quality of life uh, for them to participate? Not only perhaps management or others that I'm bringing in, but uh, others that are going to, to stay here and feel that it's uh, significant. That's why we have to support areas such as the zoo, the DIA, and others, because that's part of our fabric of our life. And other large urban areas have them. 
we will become less competitive if we don't. You know, but we got to translate what Brooke was saying down to the, the voter level. So that's it, it, the economic development impact of those cultural institutions is incredible. But, you know, back in Washtenaw County, we got just as many people who go to Toledo for that experience as go to Detroit. So we got to build in value for them. Dave Flynn from Macomb County Board of Commissioners is always saying, uh, let's talk to people about what they get out of this investment. Let's make it crystal clear for them that there's benefit to them as residents of this region and we got to carry that message stronger and bigger. The conversation continues. It's the Fab Five session for the Detroit Regional Chamber 2012 Mackinac Policy Conference on News Talk 760 WJR Detroit. WJR takes a break. We'll come on back here to our My Vote Mackinac Mackinac desk and we'll talk a little bit to Rick Pluta. All right, so we, um, first off, we already we already had a little Brooks Mark Hackle, they had a little fun and in jest, uh, Brooks was poking a little bit of fun at the, the new Macomb initiative to make Macomb your home and, and the shoreline here, but let's get to the substance. Okay. All right. A lot of talk, uh, and, and as we thought, because and, and, you know, this wasn't, uh, um, I mean, this was not a bold prediction, mm -hmm. that there was a lot of talk right at the outset on uh, regional transportation, and it sounded like um, Bob Ficano, the uh, Wayne County uh, executive, was sort of throwing down a challenge to the legislature to uh, do something to force the region to do something about a regional transportation authority. One mm -hmm. of the big challenges is how do you make all these different agencies located in different places work together and it's everything from you know if, if you're going to work together you know one person in Wayne County is you know paid mm -hmm. at one rate in the city of Detroit it might be another rate there are different pension rates just a whole myriad of technical details like that that need to be worked out and uh, what the Wayne County executive said was um, it'd be nice if the legislature did something set yeah. a set a deadline and uh, force them to uh, pull it together you know and what um, Brooks Patterson said the Oakland County executive it, you know it always comes back to the money just tell me how much it's going to cost, and, and in where, County it does. and where are we and where are we going to get the money from? Um, that's the big question. Yes, and uh, he also predicted that uh, it's not something that policymakers are going to decide; that that'll be a voter decision. Mm -hmm. All right, um, it's it's interesting to see the see the byplay. Always starts off kind of. Um, excited and fun, um, but starting to talk a little bit about, I like that when you talk about tone, um, Conan Smith is very comfortable up there. And even though he's kind of the new guy to the bench, and mm -hmm. um, but he's got a very, he's got, a, he's very even and thoughtful. Mm -hmm. and, very um, relaxed. Yeah, yeah. and very, um, and very relaxed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he is. And um, he is from a uh, political family. His uh, wife is a uh, state senator. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, he's he's comfortable operating in that environment already. But you're right. That, that I mean, that was an astute observation that, you know, he jumped right in and he's engaging with those guys and talk and, and you know, making the point that Washtenaw, even mm -hmm. though it's you know, new to, to this particular group is a player in the region. Um, talk to me a little bit about, uh, as, do you think that they did allude a little bit to some of the troubles that Bob Ficano has been facing just in terms of... Well, we of heard Brooks Patterson walk back from one of the more controversial things he said earlier uh, at this conference and uh, sort of, I mean, it was almost like a, an expression of support for mm -hmm. uh, the county executive while, uh, you know, two county executives sticking together while one of them is kind of embattled. It's very interesting. I'm, I wonder how vocal Dave Bing is going to be uh, during this conversation. There has been a lot of questioning of his leadership here up on the island just in terms of seeing the headlines in the newspapers of mm -hmm. who's going to run. We know Nolan Finley, who is a contributor here, talked right. about um, he that, said that, that, that the business, business leaders, people are asking him not right, to. But he didn't name anybody specifically. Nobody mm -hmm. on the record wanted to go on the record and saying it. Um, you have well, to wonder how that does weigh. The, the, mayor, the mayor has been very circumspect about his political future. He was mm -hmm. asked about it at an event earlier uh, today and he said he's got 18 months left in, in mm -hmm. this term and that's what he needs to be focused on right now mm -hmm. and and he's kind of right just you know as a practical matter he's going to have to build the case by showing some successes that uh, he deserves another term if he wants one mm -hmm. all right so as we go uh, a little bit forward here and, and when we come back around I, you know I wonder also how much if they're gonna address the budget issues in Detroit they, they did announce this morning that was the that press conference with the mayor that the, uh, the, he and the City Council 
council have come together with an agreement? There appears to be an agreement, and um, the mayor and Governor Rick Snyder are on the same page in terms of wanting the city's financial advisory board to uh, move ahead, examine the budget, and make its recommendations without waiting for the city council to name its members on that board while it uh, apparently wants to you know, go ahead with some kind of challenge to the consent agreement. Yeah, Andy Dillon said here yesterday, he said, look, seven is a quorum, so we have right. we have the number of people, and if they want to, you know, if they want to kind of catch up. But uh, there's there's also a subtle message in that too. That's telling the city council you can play or you can sit on the sidelines, mm -hmm. but we're not waiting for you. Yeah, and we did have Andre Spivion who said, well, look, I think it's really important that we we need to get people to that table because we need to be part of the process, um, it, it, just to make sure that we know what's going on and that we can if nothing be else be right yeah. there. Um, and and no, uh, what do you think that we're going to start to take away from this conference when everyone leaves the island and all the good feelings of innovation and entrepreneurship and um, regional, you know, working together. Uh, what do you think we're going to be able to take away from well, this year? You know, in, in, in terms of both the Snyder administration and the Bing administration, we've, we've reached the point where, you know, they came in with big ideas. Rick Snyder certainly did and, and got them rolling. And, and now a lot of them are sort of caught in a quagmire mm -hmm. that, you know, he has not been able to get the new international border crossing in, mm -hmm. in Detroit moving through the legislature, that the emergency manager law could be subject to a referendum or waiting on a court ruling and, and, and whether or not that will appear on the ballot. And so I, I think this is sort of the, um, you know, buckling in for, for, the, uh, for the journey. The, you know, what do you do to, uh, you know, get to, to the ends and the goals that you set? Um, now that uh, now that you've got it started, that I think is kind of you know the theme and the zeitgeist of this conference. All right, and we will continue to talk about that. But right now, we want to send you back to the auditorium and to the Fab Five. Life just got a little easier. From the site of the 2012 Mackinac Policy Conference, this is the Fab Five, an in-depth and comprehensive conversation between five key decision makers in the future of Detroit and Southeast Michigan. Detroit Mayor Dave Bing, Wayne County Executive Robert Picano, Macomb County Executive Mark Heckel, Oakland County Executive L. Brooks Patterson, and Washtenaw County Board of Commissioners Chair Conan Smith. Today's Fab Five Policy Roundtable is brought to you in part by the Detroit Medical Center, always there, and by Priority Health. Life just got a little easier. Now, your Fab Five moderator, Paul W. Smith. Thank you so much to our audience here in the theater at beautiful Grand Hotel, and uh, congratulations to the Musser family in their 125th anniversary year, and to our listeners on News Talk 760, WJR, the Rush Limbaugh Show, following it. 1 o'clock on the great voice of the Great Lakes, News Talk 760 WJR. There have been recommendations for regional authorities to govern regional infrastructure, COBO, transit, water, etc. Should infrastructure become a basis for regional governance? Gentlemen? I don't. You have to define infrastructure. Are we talking water, sewer, highways? What, what? I don't know. I think that we're talking about all of the infrastructure that we all share. I suppose there'll be some challenges to regional control over assets that go you know, through our respective counties, but again, uh, the devil's in the detail. We built, you built yours in your community, we built ours in our community, so we have a cost investment in there. Um, how's that protected? Who's going who's to make the future repairs of an older system like Detroit has? It's a lot of fish hooks in those deals. There are a lot of fish hooks in those deals. A lot of people have lots of questions. People have asked about branding. Is there a way that together as individual counties, we can have a certain brand that goes through for kind of a state brand, if you will, that touches through the counties? Uh, if you ask yourself for the regional brand, what does the region stand for across all counties? How do we reach consensus and agree to use a regional brand consistently, if you think that's even possible? Can we begin to successfully promote one regional brand? You know, well, that well, depends upon the market that you're looking at, really, because, like, Detroit is our global brand, and we need to make sure that that brand is super strong. But when you're getting down to the local level and you're starting to say, you know, like Oakland County versus Ann Arbor, you know, those are different places with different feels and they need to be able to market themselves effectively at a national or, or a, a Great Lakes level. But we all need to make sure that the, the core brand, the home brand that is Detroit that's recognized worldwide is a powerful one. 
And I think we need to figure out how do we add value to that. In other words, Macomb County, my job was, as I first got in office, county executive, is to make that determination. What is Macomb County? Most people looked at Macomb County as blue collar. Well, it is blue collar, but we're more than that. And the question was, what do we have to offer to the region? What do we have to offer to the state? I think what we need to do, and working with his governor, Governor Schneider, we made a pitch about the defense industry, the defense quarter. Mm -hmm. It went from arsenal of democracy to arsenal of innovation. I mean, there's an incredible asset that we have there for economic development. And going to him and talking to him about what we had, they recognized early on, Mike uh, Finney and the MEDC said, you know what, why do we have the director of the uh, MEDC defense here in Lansing when it should be right where that cluster, that core is that adds value to the state? So part of that branding is becoming not just the defense capital of the Midwest in that cluster area. How do we grow that to become the defense capital of the world? So I think we all need to, throughout the state, make a determination as to what brand do we have, what are the assets I have in Macomb County? What is the accessibility throughout the region that we have, that value? And uh, try to figure out how do we brand the state specifically so that when we do go overseas, whether it's to try to market our products or to bring investment over, people have a true understanding of the various assets throughout the state. Pure Michigan is a great brand. Macomb County fits right into that with a 31 and a half mile coastline. It doesn't get 20, much more than the <laughs> Macomb County's <laughs> pure brand when it comes to Lake St. Clair, the busiest freshwater lake in the entire country uh, during the summer months. Yeah. E. coli cleanup, that's the busiest. <laughs> oh. Oh, 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 oh. Let, let yes, I think we're going to have regional collaboration. <laughs> You know, yeah. but, but wait, you know what? We call it regional Mark's right. collab collaboration. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Mark is right. They got the defense industry in space. They, they, it's loaded. And good for him. Uh, we have uh, burgeoning health care as, as our most, I think, uh, aggressive sector today. Uh, but we, in Southeast Michigan, we have more engineers than any place in America. So, and, and everybody's got their strengths. I don't want to forego uh, bragging rights on the health care sector and on the engineering you know, strength that we have and just blending it in. Uh, there's, there's strength in diversity, I guess is what I'm arguing for. Mm -hmm. You know, let, let's face it, uh, our brand around the world is, is Detroit. Uh, you go any place around the world and you say, where are you from? We don't say from our individual counties or, or anything like that. We say we're uh, from the Detroit area. Obviously, what we're identified with is because for 100 years, we have put the world on wheels, and we're recognized uh, by that. And to pick up a little bit on, on what Brooks said, uh, one of the, the greatest feats that we have is that we have more engineers per capita here in southeastern Michigan than they do anyplace else in the world. And that's a real big advantage, which includes our uh, educational institutions, such as U of M and, and Wayne State and their engineering schools and things. I mean, truth be told, one of the main reasons why GE located in here is because of the engineering school uh, that's at uh, University of, of Michigan. You look at uh, the rest of the world and globally. In the United States, uh, on, on a prism a little bit, we, there's nothing wrong with lawyers and doctors and stuff. They sort of put them on a pedestal. You go around the rest of the world and what are, who do they put on that pedestal? It's engineering, it's innovation, it's technicians and, and things like that that really make things, make something out of nothing uh, that uh, becomes outstanding. And that, we, we've, we've been fortunate for the past you know, 50 years, 60 years with the auto industry and, and people perhaps didn't have to step up as much into those fields because the auto industry was taking care of them. If you wanted you know, a comfortable life and you could go to the jobs in the factory and things like that, those days are gone. We're in transition. Let's be the area of innovation, light manufacturing, things that have put us on the map. We can really advance and tell the rest of the world. Well, you know, from a Detroit standpoint, I think uh, it is the brand. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind about that. But we've got to see how we enhance the brand. And I think what's happened in the last couple of years is we're, we're not getting credit outside of this area for what's happening. Um, you know, with when I look at two billion dollar investments from healthcare uh, over the last several years, um, uh, that's huge. What's going on up and down Woodward Avenue is huge. Um, so I believe from an entertainment standpoint, Detroit probably has as much to offer already in place than any other area uh, in Michigan. I mean, we've got, um, you know, you've got the Tigers, you've got the Lions, you've got the, the Red Wings, maybe the Pistons come downtown. But from a sports <laughs> entertainment standpoint, Brooks, it, it'll be okay. I want the Lions it'll back. Be okay. <laughs> I want the Lions back. You want it because they're starting to get better right <laughs> now. <laughs> they're going to stay where they are. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, Paul W., one of the things that I, I don't care about, tie this regional governance conversation together with the, the branding conversation, I, I, I do not care about the power distribution in the region around this governance issue. What I care about is how we all, all you out there in the audience and, and our governments, invest in our 
core asset, which is the city of Detroit, and leverage its growth and development to the point where it becomes the kind of attractant for uh, talent and for capital that it needs to be for all the rest of our communities to be truly, remarkably successful. And Conan Smith, it, it, you, know, you know, I got to say, Conan Smith brings a lot of interesting uh, insight, but is Washtenaw County ever really going to be a part? Oh, well, wait a minute. I'll take exception to what Cohen had to say. I, the comments are nice, but Washington is not in the zoo tax. Washington is not in the DIA tax. Washington is not in the smart tax or the suburban tax. All these, all these institutions that you want to protect, you don't have any skin in the game. So until you pay your way in, you know, I don't think uh, you have a whole lot to say about how it's done. Yeah, but that goes back to what Bob was just saying. Like, we don't maybe have the tax in the game, but what we are contributing to this region is an enormous amount of talent that drives this economy. So we've got to make sure that we're not fighting over little things like that and leveraging everybody's strength to make this region really, truly strong. We well, all contribute talent. I mean, oh, U of M is not the only talent base in, in Just North the America. best one. Yeah, well. <laughs> I was, in you know, I was in court about a month ago waiting for a friend of mine to get off the bench. We were going to go to lunch, and it was a, in probate court. It was an abuse case. I could tell from my years being in court. And the judge was saying to this young adolescent boy, do you want, at that age, they have input into where they're going. So the judge said to him, do you want to go to live with your father? No, my father beats me. You want to live with your mother? No, my mother beats me. Then where do you want to go? So I want to go to U of M. They don't beat anybody. Oh. <laughs> You know what? If we're going to put plugs in, I understand at the economic club, you're going to have uh, all the three of the Spartan, uh, the two Spartan coaches as well as the athletic director. So let's hear it from Michigan State. Yes, there we well. go. <laughs> you know, Paul W., one thing we shouldn't lose sight of also, we're talking all here as government officials about us branding. Doesn't really the private sector play a big part in what gets branded because what they're investing and, and what they're doing in a, a particular area? Think back to four or five years ago. Uh, if we were trying to brand, and there's nothing wrong with being green and, and things like that, but if you were trying to say all we're really branded with is, is green energy or something like that, uh, probably today that wouldn't be as relevant as to what we see that is uh, coming up in certain areas. So the private sector also drives a lot of the branding because they're making the investment and they're saying that's what we're seeing uh, that we want to see come to this area. One of the questions, uh, back on a serious note, uh, about the college situation is there, there's a question about uh, asking if we can achieve a community college strategy where any resident can attend a community college of choice regardless of residency, perhaps leading to or encouraging specialization at different sites and an improved strength of curriculum. Any thoughts on this? Yeah, I talked to um, the chancellor of OCC, the biggest college in the state now, and asked him exactly that question because we get these questions in advance. And he said they do meet and they are working together in a collaborative way to have specializations on the different campuses of the community colleges in Southeast Michigan. So that's already happening. Whether we can just transfer students willy-nilly, uh, that's a different issue because there's different le uh, levies in each county. And so you're going to have to have some differential in tuition costs. Yeah, you got to also think about the mission of the community college system is to, to serve local, right? So if I've got to drive because we don't have a good transit system in the region. I've got to drive 45 miles to get to that specialization. That creates a barrier to education. We want to make sure that we're maintaining access for the maximum number of people because we have a problem in Michigan with uh, college graduation rates. We've got, we got to up that significantly. So access is critical. We also got to remember that the, there's a void also sometimes because the community college not only serves for specialization, but don't forget the, the students and the challenges they have now. It might serve now as the first two years for them to uh, get ready and be able to go to four-year institutions such as uh, U of M, Michigan State, Wayne State, and some of the regular ones. OU, they also OU. Have the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oakland University. Thank you. Thank and you. Macomb Community College, I mean, what they've been able to do over the years is created that opportunity, not only just for the two-year institution, to create the opportunity for those that are looking for the employers that are looking for workers to be trained specifically to the needs that they have, but we've also reached out. Macomb Community College now has 10 different universities that have signed up where you can actually get your, your beyond your two-year degree right in Macomb County as a result of that connectivity with those other institutions or universities. So we, I, I think we got a great university there that specifies or specializes in providing training and education to the workforce that we have, and that's something that gets left out of the mix. Everybody wants to talk about the engineers and some of these other, um, I guess, uh, you know, high-paying jobs that are out there, but let's not forget about the skilled workforce that we have, that labor pool, that talent that we have that gets educated from these community colleges that provide that basis of support to build the things that we build and the products that we sell overseas. 
Well, Wayne Community College obviously um, is, is a mainstay in the county, in the city of Detroit also. And, and you know, they're at a point now where uh, they can't even take anybody else in. So they're going to have to, in order to bring more students in, and you're talking about tremendous investment uh, because they'd have to expand. But one of the areas that I think they're really concentrated on right now is the service industry. And that's an industry that's really growing rapidly in the city of Detroit. So. Um, you know, keep tuned into that. They've got some good programs in place, and uh, a lot of people are there um, um, taking advantage of those programs. You know, it, it appears when we get together like this each year that the collaboration sounds like a very good idea. And other than the other Fab Fours and Fab Fives that have seemed to, to spring up uh, from this one over the years, uh, do you guys ever really get together and have meetings as a group other than in those Fab Four, Fab Five sessions that become... Broadcast. I, I'm looking at Sandy Pierce. Uh, uh, Sandy has called us down, I think, three or four times under the mantle of the Michigan business leaders, and that's a group, Sandy. Yeah, we, we've been with that group a number of occasions, so we do get together. You do get together. Oh, yeah. Well, the but four it goes of them get it. together. So you want to talk about how to bring Washington into this region stronger. Like, those are the kind of conversations. Like, it's hard to come back to, uh, to my community and say, participate in this regional tax when you're not part of the, the, the conversation that creates it. You mean if you... Get, you wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, Brooks, Brooks, wait, Brooks. So if you guys will contribute to tax money, if, if all we have to do is ask you to be participants in the conversation. <laughs> hey, you'll get me to do it, all you got to do is say, give me a dime. You know, I, I got it, I got it. I'm, I'm there for the DIA. I love this, that, the whole idea of the, the cultural tax critical, and I hope it uh, just is a rampant success. And I want to see that come to Washtenaw. But if we want to see Washtenaw be a real part of the region, we have a cultural gap that we gotta, we got to bridge right now. we got to build stronger affinity between my community and the mayor's community. <laughs> Bring your checkbook. <laughs> pay to play. Great. <laughs> I'm, I'm you know, we got, we, in Washtenaw County, just... we got the highest SEV per capita. we got the, the, the highest income per capita. And the, the pay-for-play mentality, it doesn't fly in Washtenaw. You know, this, we're, we're collaborators. <laughs> we're not, we're not buy your way into the table. We want to be. We want to be part of creating. Success. You don't want to be part I'm of the, the system, but you don't want to pay for it. I don't know. We're happy Come to in. pay for it, but don't don't you make all the decisions and then come tell us how much it costs. I'm not making the decisions. <laughs> tell me. Yeah. Well, I think the DAA did approach you about being part of the the tax, correct? Yeah, and we actually talk very substantively substantively about uh, how Washtenaw can get in on that. And again, what what the divide ends up being, Bob, is this: uh, we don't have a, an experience base with those regional assets. We've got to get our community in Washtenaw to understand, hey, this is part of your lifestyle on a, on a daily, yearly basis so that they can say, yeah, I invest in this because it's important to me. All right. You, you can start with the business community around U of M. I mean, companies that are attracting to go there, uh, again, it's the same model. If they're bringing people in or people uh, are part of it, they're, part of their experience is that they're going to want to go to the DIA. I mm -hmm. mean, you probably have more people that you encounter like that than a lot of other areas around the metropolitan area. So you have a basis, really, to go to them and say, you know, this is important because you're not only you're satelliting around U of M, uh, but it will help you with uh, recruiting and bringing people into the area. Here, here. Gene Gargaro and I are just talking about how we get the, the, the civic leadership cadre that is members of the DIA to speak out in favor of uh, being participants and keeping it strong. Well, needless to say, uh, this is a, a, a thing about collaboration and partnership, so I, I don't see us really solving the problem of making sure that we include Washington as we go forward. But I think uh, some of the meetings that we do have, you've got an open invitation. Well, Washington has an open invitation, and we've got to figure out how to bring you into the partnership. Thank you. What are the counties, uh, one of our questions from uh, our audience, what are the counties doing to support manufacturers? Infrastructure, tax credits, training dollars, et cetera. Brooks? Well, we've got uh, a couple of programs that I think are very successful, starting with Automation Alley. Automation Alley is uh, a branding initiative. Now it reaches out into eight counties, so it truly is a regional effort. And it does reinforce and brand the region as a high tech and, and, and also in advanced manufacturing. Uh, Kenny Rogers, I think he's sitting out there, he can tell you about a thousand members now. And these are c companies who uh, really form, I think, the nucleus of our whole manufacturing operation in Southeast Michigan. So we got programs to promote them, to expand them. Kenny takes trade missions overseas. Uh, I think one of his guys is going on his way to uh, South America as we speak. 
so it is in support of the manufacturing sector, and it's, 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 we think it's a very, very supportive role. And we created a facility now that we have that uh, really is focused on dealing with defense and homeland security in Macomb County. Velocity is what it's called. It's a partnership with Oakland Community College, um, with the city of Sterling Heights and uh, Macomb County to try to figure out how do we bring um, opportunities available for those that want to manufacture in those particular areas or that, I guess, uh, clustering. Anybody else? Sure. Bob? We have one of the biggest uh, assets, obviously, in the area with Metro Airport, a $10 billion asset that's uh, there with the whole concept of the Aerotropolis, which, quite frankly, has, has taken off. The first quarter has been phenomenal for us. We've had about $340 million of investment in Wayne County alone in the first quarter. We usually average about $500 million without the big projects that uh, exceptionally come every uh, decade or so. And uh, with those type of uh, attractions, not only the airport, but uh, things such as the Wayne Assembly Plant and other ways that we've been able to work with the auto companies, we've seen a great amount of expansion. And the auto companies are great partners, too, because many of the suppliers and things like that, they tell them, well, maybe you supply us in Asia and things like that, and that's fine. If you want to locate, you must come and locate in this area close to us. So they've, they've been great partners in, in doing that and helping us. How are things for you, Robert Fercano, with all of the, the heat and uh, the disruption in your office and the people that uh, have been teammates of yours and such? How are you doing and are you able to get work done? I am doing fine. Like I said, Wayne County is open, open for business and we're functional and we're running very well. All our vendors are being paid, uh, the payrolls are being met, uh, we're dealing with our budget issues, uh, and the investment... The, keeps coming in. Like I said, the 340 in one quarter is obviously going to surpass the 500 uh, million uh, that we're in. Are there always going to be some rough spots? I've been fortunate. I've been in public office uh, for 30 years, and there's going to always be some difficulty. To me, a CEO is, once you see the problem, you hold people accountable. If they want to work in the shadows, uh, at that point, you hold them accountable and you bring them to justice or whatever you need to do and you make corrections. I have a great new team with uh, Jeffrey Collins and Ray Byers and, and some of the others that, that are in there, and Wayne County is moving along very well, and we see it. The business community votes with its investment and its money, and they've voted for Wayne County, especially this first quarter. All right, that takes care of that. A couple of questions from our audience here at the theater at Grand Hotel. Uh, for Mayor Bing, I'll put them together. Uh, comments uh, saying, nice to see you again, asking how you're feeling. Well, my, my health is good. Um, uh, I had an incident, quite frankly. Uh, there are some people who thought that the, the pressure of the job was what caused my incident. That is not what happened. I was trying to stay healthy, and uh, every five years, once you turn 50, you go in and get your colonoscopy. Well, I did that, and I was in... Uh, I went TMI, in with, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> did you notice? Oh. Even Bob Ficano, he, he oh. didn't squirm when I was talking about the feds investigating, but he said colonoscopy, and Bob Ficano went... <laughs> well, all of us. Are, are we getting too much information hey, here? Uh, all of us, McConan. All of us. Watching what's happening? <laughs> well, Mark just yeah, turned yeah. 50. I'm learning here. Let just me, said, let I me just listen. started sweating. I just turned 50. Mark, you just you turned, turned 50. 50 yeah. be, able, yeah. be careful where you go. That's all I got to say. And, and let them be careful where they go. <laughs> because that's what happened to me. And uh, they ain't going there. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, needless to say, um, you know, I had never, I had been in a hospital before, and and I was there for that nine days, and it took a toll on my on my health. Needless to say, but I'm back, I'm healthy again, and in the office doing what needs to be done for the city. The questions go on in this uh, grouping of questions to you, Mayor Bing. Did you have a sense when you sought the office of mayor that it would be so difficult to get results? Absolutely not. Um, didn't understand the depth or the breadth of the problems that were in the city of Detroit. And, and I think those things permeated over a long period of time, and people paid little or no attention to it at all. As we got in and got into the, the detail, uh, it became very obvious to me that there were some fundamental things that we had to do. There was a culture change that we're still going through that was very, very difficult because I think a lot of people felt as long as I'm on the payroll, as long as I come to work, I'm okay. I don't, I'm not being held accountable for anything. So there have been a lot of changes in personnel from a leadership standpoint that have occurred over the last three years and will continue. Um, but the problems were, were, were very difficult, and uh, needless to say, some of the decisions that we have to make today should have been made a long time ago, but they're, it's, it's on my call right now, and we're making those tough calls. You've answered this question, but apparently still being asked by people, are you seeking re-election? Well, you know, I'm not, I got 18 months in this term, and I'm not really concerned about what's going to happen 18 months from now. What I've got to do is to make sure that my focus continues to be 
on fixing some of the problems that we have in Detroit. You know, I, I've... You know, uh, yeah, we talk about crime. I mean, that's a big issue that everybody is concerned about. And so we're going to stay on top of that as our number one issue. We talked regional transportation up here a moment ago. Transportation in Detroit, especially the, the DDOT, is something that we are fixing right now. And then hopefully the lighting system. And I do understand that uh, uh, today uh, up in Lansing, uh, some of those bills came out of committee that's going to allow us to move forward and change the whole lighting situation in, in Detroit. And I'm looking forward are to you, that. Are you, are you sensing more pressure than ever, even up here among people, about things like that? Uh, yes, I am. I think people are waiting for change right now. And uh, there are things that we had talked about uh, going back to my first year. But um, there were a lot of issues that stood in our way of getting things done. So uh, some of it is in Lansing uh, with legislation being passed that will allow us to move forward. Now that we have a consent agreement, uh, working in partnership with Lansing, the governor's office in particular, I think we're going to be able to do some things much faster than we did in the first couple of years. The Fab Five on WJR, Dave Bing, Robert Ficano, Mark Hackle, L. Brooks Patterson, Conan Smith as we continue. Stay with us. And you are watching live coverage of the Mackinac Policy Conference and the session of the Fab Five, one of the favorites here. It is day three of the conference, and we're so glad that you are joining us for our live coverage streaming on myvote.org and on your PBS stations across the state. Michigan Public Radio Network's Rick Pluta is with me. So we're going to talk a little bit about what we just saw. And we, we got a little more lively than the first six minutes. Let's start with the entertainment report. Okay, good. All right, the entertainment you know, report. Back in, you know, back in the day, the big rivalry in the, among this group was between Brooks Patterson and the late uh, Wayne County Executive Ed McNamara. Mm -hmm. Then it was Brooks Patterson and Kwame Kilpatrick. Now the rivalry, the back and forth, the kidding, and, 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 and the barbs are between Oakland uh, B between Brooks Patterson mm -hmm. and Conan Smith from, uh, from Washtenaw, Washtenaw County. County. We saw you know, them joking about uh, uh, you know, University of Michigan, um, just, a, just a lot of uh, back and forth between them. We saw Conan Smith also say that Washtenaw wants to be part of the reason, part, part of the region, mm -hmm. but don't expect that the other four are going to go get together and make decisions about the region and then come to Washtenaw and ask for money. And ask like how much, just tell us what to pay, but you get to make all the decisions. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a very poignant line. And uh, he will point session. out that Washtenaw is, and you know, the, the, the Ann Arbor area is a community that is willing to pay taxes for a benefit. So I mean, there's, 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 that's, that's got to be somewhat interesting to uh, to that group. I think it was um, it was good then. And Dave Bing said, "Look, you have an open invitation now mm -hmm. to to sit and to meet um, and to come to the table." And I think he, you know, Conan Smith again. We talked about this. He's bringing a bit of a different vibe here and mm -hmm. bringing a little bit of youth into into leadership mm -hmm. um, and really someone I've been fascinated to watch from now to from year to year here on Mackinac. He's, he's, he's comes from a very political family. His uh, mother is uh, Alma Wheeler Smith. Uh, his grandfather was uh, the first African-American mayor of Ann Arbor. His mother is a, um, a, a well-known local uh, uh, political figure. He's and his married wife? to a, a Rebecca Warren, a, a, a state senator. So, you know, it's an environment that, you know, he's not only comfortable in, he was raised in it. Mm -hmm. um, and, he's and he's thriving in it. Let's Let's talk a little bit about Mayor Dave Bing, who um, got probably, we got the biggest roar of laughter. I mean, he's talking about his health because everyone is who saying to him. Who doesn't like a good colonoscopy joke? Well, you yeah. know, I, I think it, it broke the tension a little bit because people have been, when they do see him up here, that how are you? It's so great to see you. How are you doing? I'm sure he's been asked that so many times. And mm -hmm. so he did address his health and then talk about colonoscopy. And of course, Brooks, who couldn't resist an, uh, <laughs> yelling TMI. TMI, right. And you know what? And it also, you're right. It did break the tension right after the 900-pound gorilla in the room was addressed, which is Bob Ficano, Wayne County, and the scandals that are plaguing his, administra his administration. He took the opportunity to say Wayne County is open for business. That mm -hmm. this, isn't, uh, this isn't slowing us down. Because you wonder how difficult this has now made his job. Is he as effective as he can be because of the investigations that are swirling around people in his office? Not just that, but you know, um, the, the reinvention of Detroit, that the state would like to see a lot more 
um, cooperation so that you have sort of uh, a relationship between the county and Detroit, not mm -hmm. unlike Cook County and, and the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. There are things that you can do with health care, with transportation, with, with, with pensions that, that just make sense. And they're not going to move ahead with those until these scandals get, get resolved. I, I think it's interesting to point out, though, that Bob Ficano, however, you know, very public that he is and in terms of all the public offices he's held, he's always had a great relationship with the media. And he was here up all three days. It wasn't one of those things where he came up for a day and, and just kind of saw everyone he needed to see and got out of here. And yeah, no he, going into hiding. And no, and no going into hiding. He faced a lot of questions. Now, whether he gave the answers that people wanted to hear um, from him is, is a different story, but he, he's it does, it definitely does, out there. It does speak to his formidable survival skills in, mm -hmm. um, in that environment, and I don't think that anyone denies that, that, that he has them. Um, let's go back a little bit to, to Mayor Dave Bing, again, addressing the question if he is going to run again. And he said uh, uh, that he's got 18 months and now is not the time to be uh, focused on that. And he, did you notice it was a line that drew a lot of applause from the crowd of business people out there? And I, I'm, I'm just wondering, what were they applauding? Were they applauding him not announcing a re-election bid? Were they applauding the focus on, on the city? You know, why, why did he get that reaction? You know what? I, I don't know. I, I would tend to say that they were probably applauding the fact that he says that we've got a job to do over the next 18 months and, and we've got to go forward that. and we've got to focus on doing it because I think that is, is the headline coming out of here is what's going to happen in the city in the next couple of weeks. Where is this agreement going to get to? Are the two members going to, the last two members on this board and how is it going to take shape and what is the leadership really going to look like? Who's really going to be in charge? and who's really going to be calling the shots? How is this all going to work out? So when people hear the mayor uh, come out and say, we've got a job to do, we've got to get it done, just words, need to see action, but again, that emphatic and that um, th the leadership coming out when you sit there in front of a crowd like that and say that openly, I, I think they're saying, okay, this is what we needed to hear. And, and it sends a message that he's still in charge, even though, you know, there are, are you know people out there who are gossiping about who might be lining up to uh, run for that position. And how long is the line? <laughs> See that porch out there? <laughs> and then you say... Wow, because what kind of job is that going to be in 18 months? Well, you know, it's an interesting thing. In, in a crisis situation like this, and, and, and the city of Detroit is in a mm -hmm. financial crisis, that you do see new names and faces emerge. And sometimes, actually, they're, they're maybe long gone names and faces. You know, we saw the return mm -hmm. of uh, Bob Bowman, who was All sort right. of a star state treasurer. Okay, well, so you know what? We're getting the signal that we should be heading back in, and let's pick back up again with uh, the Fab Five. Uh, we wanna, uh, if, if you still get your uh, hands together here, let's give a nice, a warm thank you to the chairwoman, chairwoman, chairperson of the conference, Nancy Schlichting, an excellent job from Henry Ford Health Systems, and to the CEO of the Detroit Regional Chamber, Sandy Barua. Sandy, nicely done. Tammy Conrack over there, I see. Yeah, good job. It's been a uh, a very, very good uh, policy conference, no question about it. Uh, the question from the audience, what do all of you individually think of more casinos in Michigan? I'm totally against it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> if I had three, I'd be against it. Of course, it. and so, so is Bob, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, the free, biggest challenge is actually getting it on the ballot to actually see something like this occur. So let's, let's face the reality or the facts. There's going to be a huge pushback by the three commercial casinos. There's going to be a pushback by the tribal casinos. So the reality of this happening is going to be a very difficult challenge. However, if there is something that does occur, and talking to our township supervisor in Clinton Township, Bob Cannon, their council, uh, the trustees, they're supportive because that's apparently where one is earmarked. If it does occur, what I want to see is something grow around it. In other words, not just to look at a casino as the economic opportunity for that municipality, but what type of community development opportunities may come from it. And if Macomb County, it's because it happens to be a host county, gets some funding from it, I want to earmark a certain percentage of it, and that being the tune of about a million, two million for community development projects, talking about our lakefront, our rivers, to create those opportunities for people to say, you know what, I want to live, work, and play in Macomb County because of the assets that they have for those uh, community development pieces, quality of life. You know, at what point do you have too many uh, in terms of uh, not only the three, obviously, that we know about in, in Detroit, but I think with uh, the, the Indian bank, casinos, yeah. there's something like 27 uh, around the whole state. Plus, the other issue we're now going to be facing is that uh, the state of Ohio has passed uh, legislation that allows them to... Uh, they just opened in Toledo. That Toledo, Cleveland, and some of the other areas. Uh, the, the, some of the media reports is that that's $30 million less a year that's going to come into the area. Uh, casinos are, are, are good in, in terms of helping and, uh, and 
with employment and, and things like that. But have we reached a saturation point now? When you add the Indian casinos as well as the three in Detroit, uh, all you're doing around then is shifting money around. Uh, it, we're, we should be into producing things and making things. I, and that's what really grows your economy. You know, if you're going to do anything with a gambling industry, <laughs> I, I'd like to see that gambling industry diversified so that some of our existing assets, like the, the racetrack in Hazel Park, can be reinvigorated. Uh, you know, new casino development is... You know, it is what it is, new business development, but we still have these defunct assets that need to be uh, become real vibrant community assets again. Uh, that's where Re Ray Sino comes into play, and in Hazel Park, I've worked with them over the years. They've I'm on record, seven zip, uh, unanimous vote of the city council to put Ray Sino into the Hazel Park. They're down to seven tracks in Michigan. At one point in time, it was their third largest industry. Now it's about to, you know, be eclipsed. And uh, so that's maybe a halfway point. And I said in another program when we were all together, um, but I like a casino. Well, the casinos are in getting into the communities by promising a little piece of the action. But I tell you what, I'd rather have a Chrysler headquarters in Oakland County than a casino all day long and the 12,000 jobs it creates. That makes sense. Uh, it, from our, our folks that are here in the theater at Grand Hotel, uh, one of the questions, uh, with reference to cultural institutions, is there any solution regarding financing for example, the Science Center, the African American Museum, the uh, Historical Museum. I can say that Jean Gargaro and I were speaking earlier today, and there is supposed to be a very good positive announcement uh, soon regarding the Detroit Science Center. Uh, I'm not sure what the announcement is. It's supposed to be positive. Uh, I think that money, like in the case of the DSO, is coming privately, but to, what are your thoughts? Is there anything that you have come up with or want to come up with or think you should come up with in terms of financing these cultural institutions? You know, my county was the last to pass in the DA and put it on the ballot, and it was a struggle. We had no votes to spare, and there's a lot of feeling out there that we're being taxed and taxed and taxed and taxed, and I, I argue this isn't a tax. This is a question that goes on the ballot. Let the public decide if they're going to pay two-tenths of a bill, one a $400,000 home, that's 40 bucks. Uh, that's, so I don't have a problem raising the question, but let the public decide. And if these are assets are worth saving, let the public decide. Early childhood development and education, the governor mentioned it. It was discussed earlier in the week by business leaders for Michigan. What is the city? What are the counties? What are all of you going to do to change education? What is the solution? You know, no question we need a, a, a bigger investment in under age five. Uh, you know, when I, when I was a young kid, my parents uh, came from an education background. My grandparents, uh, my grandfather was a professor at U of M. They made sure I could read by age three. That's got to be a commitment from the state of Michigan. Every child in Michigan ought to be able to read by age three so that we can move forward with those kids into to kindergarten, first grade, so that by the time they get to, into high school, when they're 10th graders, they ought to be college ready if they're going to be world competitive. So we've got to think about expanding that education range and figuring out the finance mechanisms to do it. Howard, well, oh, go ahead, Mr. Well, Mayor. On the DPS side and the EAA, for example, I, I think uh, obviously uh, DPS has been shrinking for a long period of time, and it's going to continue to shrink in the near future. But what they are doing is looking at concentrating their resources on a smaller group of schools, a smaller group of students, um, that they can predict what they're going to be able to do. And they're putting the necessary funding in place right now uh, to make sure that there's going to be success. My concern is what happens with those schools that are no longer part of DPS. They're going to another system, and I'm not sure that the funding is there and all the resources are there to make sure that those kids in that school system are going to be successful. You, you know, Paul W., one of the things that we know that does work is the Kalamazoo Promise. How you would be able to bring that uh, to southeastern Michigan would be phenomenal. We, we realize that not only there are more opportunities, we see more economic growth, we, we see a, a better education that is happening with that type of scholarship guarantee that, that, is, happening, uh, that, that is occurring in, in Kalamazoo. Now that was a, I think not even all the donors are really known yet or, or not public. Uh, that are that are there and participating, but if we could ever transform southeastern Michigan into something like that, I think you see dramatic not only education growth but uh, obviously uh, economic growth as well. Question is uh, regarding the personal property tax elimination. How are you planning for the PPT elimination? Are local governments being 
a productive part of the conversation. If the Senate poison pill amendment stays in, are locals prepared to have a flood of new assessment responsibilities if the legislature chooses not to appropriate replacement funds? Gentlemen. I think there's uh, 32, 33 states that have a tax on personal pop S machinery and equipment in your plants. We have it, and uh, Indiana has it, and everybody else around us does not. So we're at an you know, uncompetitive situation. We try to recruit business because we, we tax, since an owner is tax. Uh, and now the pro-business legislature wants to get rid of that tax. That, that's fine, and I support that. Uh, and county gets some of that revenue. And if, the, if we did away with the personal property tax, Oakland County would lose $19 million. I can live with that. I can make the adjustment, okay? But there are some of my communities in Oakland County, like Highland and other places, they get 65% of their budget off personal property tax. If you do away with it, tell me what you're going to do with those communities. So this is a, it has a lot of competing uh, interests here from communities, those who can afford it, those who can't. Dow up in Midland, and that, that, that they're pushing 70% of their income, their revenue to support their, their government comes from personal property tax. So it's really got to be thought through carefully. I, I'm willing, I, let me tell you a little philosophy here. Um, they, well, we'll get rid of it, we'll have a replacement tax. But that's like kissing your sister. You've made no progress whatsoever. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to drop this tax and increase this. That does not help the the the, uh, the business climate. Well, and even talking to the mayor of one of the largest cities in Macomb County, Sterling Heights. I mean, it's going to have a disparate impact on certain municipalities, even within Macomb County. We're talking about a ten million dollar hit for Macomb County immediately if it takes place. But those municipalities within the county are going to be hit differently. And uh, Sterling Heights, uh, you know, the the impact it's going to have on it is going to be absolutely tremendous. Some of the smaller communities that don't have that base, um, it's not going to impact them as much. So. It really, it really depends on what community within the county. Can we sustain it? Yeah, as a county, we, we look at it. We, we believe we can, uh, we can probably absorb that. It's going to be a challenge for us. Uh, but for the most part, it's the municipalities, the local municipalities, yep. I think, are really going to have a, a direct uh, hit as a result of that. And, and don't look at that as a poison pill clause. Look at it as a partnership enforcement clause. Local government has not been able to trust the legislature to consistently invest in local government and keep it steady and stable. What this, kinda, uh, what this clause in the legislation does is it says business community, local government, state legislature, we all have a dog in this fight and we need to make sure that at the end of the day nobody gets significantly harmed. So if you're not going to be a good partner, you're going to see the consequences of breaking that deal down the road. I think it's going to be devastating in areas such as uh, Wayne County. I mean, look at the city of uh, Dearborn, Ford Motor Company, the Rouge Complex, and, and all the, uh, the tentacles that would reach out and, and part of that. And I realize from a business perspective, you want to be competitive. The problem is, is that all of us perceive that everybody's holding back until the election. Then, uh, in the lame duck session, they're going to try to ram something through uh, that is going to probably hurt everybody that's, uh, that's on this panel one way or another. And the problem is also with part of the trust. Remember the promise of revenue sharing. They said, give everything uh, up. Uh, we'll promise to keep financing you through revenue sharing and things like that. What's happened? It's, it's completely being uh, eliminated, or not completely, but it's being really cut down dramatically. And that promise is being broken. So we are supposed to say, oh, in eight years, we know that you're going to make the commitment that you made today, and we're still going to be getting that uh, same replacement value that you said we're going to be getting. And I know even with the mayor and, and some of the issues, perhaps, I'm not sure with the $200 million, but uh, that issue, was that a promise? made by the legislature and the governor at the time, if you gave up part of your uh, income tax, that that was going to happen. When those promises get broken, they're telling us, have faith in us in 10 years from now. Well, we've had faith in the past, and you haven't lived up to what you said you were going to do. It would be very negative on Detroit right now, and it couldn't happen at a worse time, because as we look at our revenue that's completely going south in almost every area, uh, right now we project that uh, to have a an impact, a negative impact that would exceed $30 million, and we can't take that kind of hit now. A question from our audience, uh, putting a couple of them together for uh, Mayor Bing and uh, Executive Ficano. What about all the violence in Detroit, and uh, specifically Mayor Bing, what is your plan to tear down burned out abandoned houses and other property? Gentlemen. Um, let me speak on demolition first. Um, you know, I came into office and uh, we had over um, over 60,000 uh, empty, dangerous buildings in the city of Detroit. And over the last three years, even though we have met uh, our goal of demolishing about 3,000 a year, uh, we probably got close to that many people leaving the city of Detroit. And, uh, you know, you're playing this catch-up game, and it's, it's an impossibility almost. 
But our job is to continue uh, with the demolition of those dangerous homes uh, and buildings. And then we've got to look at uh, going back to Washington, which I intend to do, to try and get some additional funding, hopefully from HUD, uh, to help us uh, continue with the demolition program. As it relates to, to, to the violent crimes, uh, I wish I had the answer to that, quite frankly. And I know it's a cultural problem and it's an education problem. Uh, it's, it's a problem with people that are being unemployed, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't know. I mean, one of the things that really bothers me, and I want to go and, and, and make a call to our community, to parents in particular and family members, when you've got 12 and 14-year-old kids that are coming home with thousands of dollars in their pockets, with, with the eyeglasses that cost $1,000, with uh, flat screen TVs coming to your home. Nobody is working in the house, but and all of a sudden nobody challenges these kids. And, and you know, if we're going to start to break this pattern, uh, our parents and our community and our family has to start challenging these young kids because we know they're doing something that's wrong and, and, and nobody challenges them. So it's not an easy problem to solve, and I know it's generational. Uh, but we can't uh, we can't turn our backs on it. We got to really communicate with these young people. Executive Ficano, anything? Uh, sure. I know the chief is doing all that he can with uh, in in terms of the violence and, and trying to handle it. My own experience as, as sheriff, and, and I'm sure they're, they're into these type of philosophies, is that uh, the the more you can have a specialized units that go after narcotics, guns, and and uh, things such as that, uh, the more success you're probably going to have. General policing is very good at, at answers calls and things, but if you know that uh, in so much of the crime, especially violent crime, is related to narcotics, to drugs, it's, it's, there is so much wealth, as what, as what the, the mayor said, that's involved in it, that youngsters and their parents looking the other way are willing to take that risk. Uh, uh, many times, when you can start to target that and go after that, and especially help from the federal government. I mean, uh, ATF and DEA and, and some of those are willing to step in and be great partners to, to help you, and they can start relieving some of those uh, uh, burdens that an uh, overtaxed police department has. But as we've all talked about, and Mr. Mayor especially, uh, when the police are called, the crime and criminal activity has already happened. This is the community that has to get involved. This is back to the, if you see something, say something. This whole idea of not wanting to be a snitch uh, is ridiculous. Your communities are dying because of it. You are going to see something before the police will ever hear about anything because they hear the gunshots after they're fired. If you see something, say something. And that's going to be at least a step in the right direction to trying to clean this up. Well, let's not miss Bob's point, though, that um, there is an economic issue here that um, folks look at, at crime as an economic opportunity. We've got to transform that whole thought process and make sure that we're investing in jobs that people who are in this situation can see as viable for them. Uh, so our economic model can't always focus on on the top end $100,000 C level C class uh, uh, opportunities. We got to make sure there's something for everybody in this model, and that helps with this problem as well. And to the credit of the uh, Detroit Police Department, if you think about what's going on in the city of Detroit, many of us had the opportunity to go to some of these sporting venues and, and entertainment uh, venues. You don't hear too much about what's happening in the downtown area as far as crime. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's well protected, and the Detroit Police Department does a great job. In particular, uh, what Bob was referring to is this regional collaboration and cooperation that goes on, whether it's a federal, state, county, and or local level. Even outside the city of Detroit, Ralph Godby and uh, his team uh, have done a great job of reaching out to help with some of those high-profile type of situations, whether it's auto theft, whether it's people that are out there dealing with drug-related issues. Um, we are supportive from a county's perspective to working with the Detroit Police Department and trying to deal with it, but it is more in the neighborhoods than it is in the downtown area. I feel safe going down there, and I think, uh, you know, hats off to the men and women in the Detroit Police Department and the efforts they put out there, here, they here. don't often get recognized enough for the things that they help prevent. Absolutely right. We have less than two minutes left. Uh, this is an angry uh, card. Why is no one talking about the Detroit water system and regionalization? Rates are out of control. Well, I, I think we did something uh, in the last year or so where from a collaboration standpoint, the city and the counties came together and uh, we put an authority together. Um, but you've got a system uh, that, uh, that's really not been maintained very well for a long period of time. And, uh, you know, the cost associated with, with maintenance and, and construction is, is going through the roof. But I think the collaboration in terms of what we've done and accomplished over the last year or so as it relates to uh, the Water and Sewer Department, uh, 
going down the road is going to be a benefit to, to the area. You know, I got 100,000 uh, residents on the Detroit water and sewer system, uh, and I think some of the groundwork that's been laid from an economic perspective in that agency is excellent. We're starting to look at um, water loss and water recovery, how we build efficiencies and energy efficiencies into that system that are going to drive costs of delivery down. There are ways to make that a better, more cost-effective system, but it's going to take investment in infrastructure, and frankly, I think that's one of the places we shall I'll be going to the federal government. We want to thank our session sponsor, Delta Airlines. Thanks to the Detroit Regional Chamber team, Sandy Baruha, Baruha, Tammy Carnreich, Wendy Nodge, Megan Spanitz. Uh, also to our executive producer, Ann Thomas, back in the Golden Tower of the Fisher Building, Lloyd Jackson here on location, to Tony Butler and Paul Roy, our engineers. We thank you all for being here with us for the Detroit Regional Chamber 2012 Mackinac Policy Conference and the Fab Five session. We'll be going to news at the top of the hour at WJR Detroit, and we'll also then join the Rush Limbaugh Show. I look forward to speaking with you live from the Chevrolet Detroit Bell Isle. And as Grand WJR Prix finishes up there, we'd like to thank you so much for joining us for live coverage of the Mackinac Policy Conference. You've just been watching the Fab Five. And the fabulous Rick Flute is here with me from the Michigan Public Radio Network. How's that intro for you? So we've got about a minute here to, to, to hash this out. What, what's the takeaway from this conversation? You know Which what? was a good one, by the way. It, it, it was. It, it moved along very quickly. You know, I was surprised at how, uh, not surprised, I was struck by how often um, this group uh, returned to the concept of regional authorities to um, talk about doing different stuff for museums, mm -hmm. for transportation, for uh, uh, various kinds of uh, infrastructure they mentioned the the uh, authority that uh, now runs uh, the 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 Kobo Center the convention mm -hmm. center uh, downtown that you know and it, it seems like there's they're sort of investing a lot of um, the future of the region in the idea on that the, you on create the cooperation yeah um, do you think that's going to be possible well, I mean, it, it, it's already being done in, you know, in, in, in some avenues. In it certain happened ways. With Kobo, but it's been really an intractable problem when you look at things like regional transportation. You heard Brooks Patterson talk about the challenge of selling um, funding to uh, take care of things like the DIA. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you know what? It, it has been a, it's been a very interesting conversation here. And what I think also we've seen is the dynamic change with, with adding Conan Smith from Washtenaw County and bringing Washtenaw into this conversation. A, a very interesting dynamic, wouldn't you say? And it's funny, almost strategically, where they were sitting as well. You have Conan all the way on the end, and then you have Brooks Patterson all the way in. Two different ways or, or philosophies, I think, of doing things. Um, but both Liberal, very conservative, uh, old school, new school. Yeah, yeah. but also, also very both politically powerful, too. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it's very, it's very good. Thanks so much, Rick Pluta, for joining me here at the Big Desk. We appreciate it for my vote, Mackinac. Pleasure All as always. right, and um, we are going to be bringing you uh, more sessions this afternoon as we start to wrap up our coverage of the Mackinac Policy Conference. The Detroit Regional Chamber puts it on every year, and we have been covering it for the last three days here at Detroit Public Television. And we so appreciate you joining us. We're going to be going to a session in a few minutes, which is going to be Michigan's big debate, the issues of 2012 and what that is going to be. It, it is going to be a interactive session. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that. But right now we're going to take a pause. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs>